In this podcast, let's talk about attachment theory in developmental or lifespan psychology. Now, attachment is that emotional bond that a caregiver and an infant has, and we're going to focus on the first couple of years of life of the infant. But the notion of attachment, which is studied pretty much around the world in all types of cultures and environments, and is, is a fairly universal almost inborn, according to the theorist, type of behavior that we have that some argue help the human species to survive. That is, uh, the affection that's shown between uh, a caregiver and infant uh, allows that infant to thrive and survive, right? And uh, vice versa. So uh, one misnomer or myth is that this attachment is only important during this early infancy stage, but really you can see signs of attachment throughout our lifespan. You can have an elderly person in their 60s or 70s still have a very strong attachment to their parent who may be in their 80s and 90s, right? And so it's, it's not so much only exclusive to this particular early stage of life. But the researchers, uh, John Bowlby and Mary Ainsworth, felt that through their research that this newborn to two-year range and the connection between the caregiver, and notice I didn't say mother or father, and because a person raising uh, a, an infant may or may not be their biological parent, right? It could be a grandparent. It could be an adoptive set of parents and so forth. So the importance of this is that Research has found, not through experiments, because you cannot flip a coin and take uh, newborns and assign them to different types of parenting, but through correlational longitudinal studies, especially, that the stronger attachment that an infant has to a caregiver during this early stage of life leads to a lot of positive results or positive outcomes and behaviors psychologically and physically for the development and growth of this child being raised. And so that's why, uh, although if someone was not raised in that environment, it doesn't mean that they're destined to be a, a bad person or, or have psychological problems for the rest of their lives. It's just that on average, growing up in that secure attachment environment is better. And so those are the two end results, is that attachment can be separated into what's called a secure attachment versus an insecure attachment. And Mary Ainsworth in particular in the early 70s was known for creating what's called the strange situation test because you can't just label two people as attached without a f form of measurement, right? There needs to be a form of measurement between so one can know uh, through numbers whether or not this child is securely or insecurely attached. So let me go through the strange situation test, and this is kind of interesting, is that in a laboratory setting, uh, Ainsworth primarily recruited mothers with infants, okay? And they would be set in a room together with some interesting toys and the observers who are looking through a one-way glass would first observe the infant's behavior in the room with the mom. Would they cling to the mom? Would they feel safe to explore the room? The two of them alone are alone in the room. Uh, in some situations, there is also a stranger in the room, probably a, a lowly research assistant just hanging out in the room. Okay. And then the mom, as scheduled, would leave the room to see how the infant or young toddler would respond. And as you might expect, uh, uh, a toddler or infant may be upset, may be confused why the mom left. And so that behavior is registered and observed and noted. And then a few minutes later, the mom returns. And then the behavior of the infant or toddler is observed and measured in terms of how they behave when the mother returns. And so the securely attached infants and toddlers were noted to show a sense of concern 
and be a little bit upset when mom leaves the room. And in a way, that's because mom represents a security, symbol of security or security blanket. And so when this person leaves the room, they're going to be uh, upset. But the key is to look at the attachment when the infant, of the infant when the mother returns, is that suddenly things are okay again. After a hug, some affection, then they feel safe to explore the room again. And you may see this in playgrounds. Not that I want you to just go observe random playgrounds, but if you happen to be at one, watch how very young children behave when the parents are around, right? And of course, the behavior of the parents is important too. Do they always keep an eye on them? Do they make sure? Do they make sure they do not wander off too far away? And you'll see that securely attached toddlers or infants tend not to go too far. They don't stray too far. They'll explore a little bit, then make eye contact with the mom or the dad or the parent, or the guardian rather, and then return to them. It's almost like they're boosting up their attachment <laughs> levels like a video game, right? So they feel more secure and then they go play again, right? And this is a healthy sign. And being a responsive caregiver creates that attachment. So if we try to interject behaviorism here, where some people might say that, well, if a toddler is crying, you can't just go to them every time. That will reinforce that clingy and crying behavior, right? Well, that is a mistaken notion because at that young age, when an infant or toddler is crying, they're in need of something, right? They're in need of security. So responding to them is a symbol that, oh, this, uh, this Asian guy always comes over here when I'm upset. Okay, that's my daughter's experience. And your experience of an Asian stranger comes over, you better watch out, right? Okay, so for her, that was a good sign that, oh, my parents came, my mom or dad came, you know, when I'm upset or when I'm crying because my diaper is, uh, is soiled, then I know this person is taking care of me. So there's a sense of predictability, a sense of security, right? Whenever uh, the caregiver is responsive like that. So what happens when a caregiver is not responsive, right? Someone's crying for a, one, a long time and then no one's responding. They're left alone in a room. They're not comforted when they're upset, right? Then the caregiver is no longer a symbol of security. And this infant sometimes might wander off and seek that with all kinds of strangers and they are less stranger wary. I remember when um, our daughter was very young and we would have these large gatherings and sometimes with strangers, you know, say at a round dinner table. And of course, when you have an infant, everybody wants to hold them. But you can tell by our daughter Emma's eye contact is that when a stranger approaches, let's say either at that sort of round table environment or when she's in a stroller at a young toddler age and other people approach, and they get close, you know, within that boundary of personal space, we notice that her eyes would veer to us. It's almost as if to get uh, a confirmation that do we approve of this stranger coming within this particular boundary? Or do I approve of, we approve of this stranger holding me when I'm being passed around a large table? Okay, so when a young uh, infant or toddler is upset, right, especially like first day of daycare, you drop them off and you want to scream, that is a sign of a healthy, uh, securely attached infant or toddler. That's very normal, right? And once they get used to that routine, knowing that you will return at the end of the day to pick them up, right, then they feel more secure during the day at that particular daycare or preschool. Okay. okay, so that's just a really a general overview and introduction, if you will, to attachment theory. There is a lot more detail involved depending on how much depth uh, your textbook covers attachment. For example, there are different uh, types of attachment labeled A, B, C, and D, and B is the secure attachment, and type A 
C and D are different forms of insecure attachment. Okay, but for now, I think that's it. And I appreciate you listening. This is Dr. C, and I'll talk to you soon.